Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a review of a game that became a big sleeper hit for me this year, and that is Don't Nod's newest game, Vampire. So to start, I'll talk about the atmosphere. It successfully captures the feel of London in 1918 in a post-industrial revolution world that has been plagued by the Spanish flu and deeply affected by World War I. In the game, you're the main character, Jonathan Reed, a doctor who pioneered a blood transfusion technique and just came back from serving in France in World War I. So at first, I didn't know what to think of this game. I actually discovered it on Amazon.com when I was shopping around, and I thought, hmm, what's this game about? So I looked at it, and I looked at the trailers, and trust me, the trailers actually don't do it justice. At first, I was very skeptical about it, but after reading the description, saying it's historical, that not only are you a metaphysical creature, but you're also a doctor who has the opportunity to make the choice to either save the people of your town or kill them was very fascinating to me, so I figured that I pretty much had to pick it up immediately. The atmosphere was one of the most successful parts of the game. You got the strong sense going through the misty streets that you were definitely in a post-war Spanish flu ravaged London. Now for me, I personally am a lover of historical fiction. Some of my favorite shows are ones like Call the Midwife, Poldark, and Downton Abbey, and I found that Vampire played a lot like those shows. You have not only one, not ten, not twenty, but sixty-six very well fleshed out NPC characters. And to get the best of the game, I recommend talking to each and every one of them. The best part of the character stories is that all of them are believable. None of them are perfectly good or perfectly evil. So that goes into the fact that the story is also a moral playground. You have your character, Jonathan Reed, who is, by all sense, a doctor. What you can do is you can choose to heal characters, and as you heal them, their XP goes up. But that also means that if you are to succumb to the hunger of being a vampire, you also take their XP. But at the same time, if you don't do their full quests and do everything that you need to do for that character and unlock all of their hints, you actually lose out on some of the story. So you have the choice of being very powerful very quickly, or as I tended to do, you would pick and choose characters who you kind of want to attack. You find that some people are essentially good, so maybe you're like, hmm, I'm gonna get that character. And then as you go, you realize, oh, this person is doing an essential function for their town. I don't think I'm going to stop them from doing what they're doing. Then you have others who seem harmless at first, but then you realize, oh, that person is trouble. So then you don't feel bad at all. The best part is that when you do their full quests, unlock as many hints for them as possible, you get the maximum amount of XP, allowing you to level up even more. So you have that conflict of either you're going to lay waste to these people, essentially putting the entire town at risk, but then you yourself get stronger. As you explore London, you find that there are different districts that deal with a lot of themes that we're even dealing with today. There are some that are extremely wealthy, whereas others are dealing with terrible poverty. So you have to take a look at each character, see what they're doing for their district, and see what you can do about improving or destroying the health of that particular district. It's very interesting. Now, if you feed on too many people, that district becomes hostile, which means that you lose all of the potential story and potential characters in it. So as much as as you want to become extremely powerful or even make London your personal buffet, there are deep consequences to your actions. That's one of the main taglines of this game. So if you're going in thinking that it's Call of Duty, that you can just wreck everybody, you're in for a rude awakening. One important thing to remember is that this game was made by Don't Nod, which is the same group of people who created the game Life is Strange. Now in Life is Strange, you have to make decisions that affect the remainder of the game. This game is no different. Although the atmosphere varies significantly from Life is Strange, you have the same sense that every decision that you make is important and will affect the remainder of the game, including the ending. So keep that in mind. You can't just become a reckless murderer without losing potential story. One of the understated and best parts of the game, hands down, though, is the music. Now, if it doesn't get at least nominated for a Game Award for its music, I'm rioting. It's what I would lovingly call stressful cello. It has a beautiful melodic cello sound that sometimes gets very avant-garde and stressful in some cases to move along with the tension of the story. 
Now hand in hand with the cello is a strange industrial revolution feel so that you get the strong sense that you're in London in the early 20th century. It's hard to describe and strange at times, but it keeps you on your toes as you're playing. It goes with the combat and goes with the story. I find that sometimes when you enter a character's house, it subtly changes into that character's theme song. It was something that was hard to put your finger on, but at the same time, I think it added to the overall atmosphere of the game, and that absolutely gets an A plus from me. Not every game has the attention to detail and music that this one does. With me personally, I'm very picky about my vampire stories. I tend to very much like them when I do, so something like Anne Rice I got into from childhood and I still love today. However, with the wave of vampire fiction that came out about 10 years ago, I became very skeptical and very jaded about it. So with Vampire, I was skeptical at first, but I figured that because of the historical aspects, I was highly drawn to it. Now, I think that this is vampire fiction done right. It has that heavy historical theme. The great part of a lot of vampire fiction is that it's not about the monster. The best part about Victorian vampire fiction, such as Dracula, is that it's more about a metaphor for something. Although in this game, I don't believe that vampirism is necessarily a metaphor for any theme in particular. I do think that it has a nice tie-in of science and metaphysics. It deals with that age-old conflict of science versus God or versus something metaphysic, which is always something that's interesting to delve into, whether in a fiction or a video game. That ties in perfectly with its complex, very dark atmosphere. I found myself enjoying it pretty much immediately. Now I just finished this game and my piece of advice is as much as possible, really do try to exhaust those dialogues with all of the NPCs. You'll find that some of them may surprise you. Although I know it might not be everyone's cup of tea to exhaust every bit of dialogue from every person, the interesting thing is you might find out that some characters are very good as you hear from say a relative or a friend and then you'll actually find out they're a total scumbag. Or the other way around, you might find the seedy person that you find has a lot of redeeming qualities. That's the fun part of the game. Nothing is exactly as it seems. As you talk to people, reveal their hints, and then do their investigations, you actually improve their blood quality. That comes into a complex conflict. The more you talk to these NPCs, the more you actually find yourself empathizing with them. So with that comes the complication of, do I heal them? Do I keep them around for their family and the people around them? Or do I feast on them to get their XP? As you go, it becomes harder and harder to make that decision. If you're playing on PlayStation, you eventually get a trophy for playing as a complete pacifist and not embracing, as they say, anybody. Now with me, I like to hover around the moral yellow ground, so I knew that I wanted to get one of their good endings, but have some fun on the way. So I did find myself embracing a few of the characters, being very careful to stay on the side of the morally good, more or less. In the end, I like my food humanely sourced. And for me, I found that to be the most fun way to explore this game. However, if you're a total sadist, you can go ahead and just chomp away and just have fun, but just know that you will miss out on vital investigations and dialogue options. Overall, I feel that this was a great experience, but there are definitely imperfections to this game. Namely, the first one was bugs. For me personally, I had quite a few starting out. I was playing with PlayStation 4, and unbeknownst to me at the time, my hard drive was starting to go south. And because the game could sometimes have surprise loading screens and get stuck and frozen once in a while, it actually reacted very negatively with my hard drive, and I ended up having to have my hard drive completely replaced. Now, that's not the fault of the game, but I did find that it is annoying even after my hard drive got fixed to sometimes deal with those surprise loading screens or those surprise freezes. The good thing is that Don't Not is still improving this game, so they are actively working on fixing those bugs on a, an ongoing basis. Another thing that is a controversial topic is the combat. I personally didn't mind it, but a lot of people found it very cumbersome because it was a very character-driven game. They thought that the combat could have been reduced pretty dramatically and that it was pretty clunky. For me, I found that it was fine. I just wish that there wasn't as many combat situations. For me, I did find a happy medium though, and this is something I'll suggest to you completely spoiler free. Now, there are three ways of attacking. There's aggressive, there's blood attacks, and there are shadow attacks. 
you can see on your enemy NPC whether they're resistant to one or more of those qualities. So you might have enemies that are resistant to things like blood attacks or aggressive attacks. What I did was I made sure to level one blood attack, one aggressive attack, and one shadow attack so that I had a quick option at all times to attack a certain person and have a strong attack that will annihilate them whether or not they're weak to another type of attack that I had in my arsenal. So I found that it was a happy medium and a very good way of doing combat in the game. One thing that personally annoyed me a lot was that there is absolutely no fast travel. So you're, you know, enjoy running through London, you're going to have to enjoy running through London because you're going to have the option to cure a multitude of characters in order to keep their district healthy. So you're going to have to run to all these districts, unlock all the shortcuts if you possibly can, and cure as many people as possible so that you keep their stores open and their people safe and healthy, if you want to go that way. Overall, I highly recommend Vampyr. I found that it was a luscious historical game that you can sink your teeth into. Although this game is plagued by a few bugs, they all have the potential to be patched. So if you like character-driven RPGs, I think that you'll really love Vampyr. So what did you think? Have you tried playing Vampyr yet? If you liked it or even didn't like it, feel free to sound off in the comments below. Give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you liked this and would like more, and I hope that you all have a great day. All and everyone needs you. Silence. I'm tired of all these puppet shows. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad.